My name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to another edition of Photoshop for Video. This week, we're going to look at a technique that can be used to create reflected or cast shadows. This works out much better than your typical drop shadow style, and we'll use it in the case of making an end tag for a production company type bumper. Let's see how. Now, you're going to want to make a new document that's sized for your videotape format. In this case, I simply made one for HD. And we're going to make a nice simple background very easily here using a gradient. Let's go ahead and click the new fill layer here, and I'm going to choose gradient. And what we want to do is go from red to black. So we're going to go ahead and set this here. We'll go for a dark red to a dark black, put a little bit of red into that black. And the top stop here is opacity. So if I don't want that to go all the way transparent, I'll simply set that to 100%. We're already getting a nice gradient here, and that's working pretty well. Let's make this initial starting color a little bit darker. Click on it real quick, and we'll just click Color, make that a little darker. There we go. Come to the dark color, make that even a little darker still. Good. I'm happy with the gradient. What we're going to do now is change it to a radial gradient, and we could tweak the angle. Now. That's already creating a nice spotlight effect. What a lot of people don't realize, though, is that this window is very interactive. So if you just click inside of it, you can move the spotlight around. I can click and drag here, and you see that we can actually position that wherever we want to to create a nice area of focus. So I'm going to actually make that a little bit lower and tweak the angle here just a bit until I get a nice pool area where the logo is going to go and some darker shadows at the edge. That looks pretty good to me and I'll click OK. Next, we're going to place the logo in. So I'll choose File, Place. Grab a logo, and click Place, and let that come in. That's working pretty well. Now, you'll notice, and this is pretty typical, that there's a problem here with the logo. A lot of times when you get vector logos, what should be white is mistakenly left as transparent. And that's because in the world of print, transparent is white, because the paper shows through. If you have this problem, it's a piece of cake. We'll just go ahead here and make a new layer, grab our marquee tool, and simply make a selection. I can go ahead and make a selection there for the size of that box if I need to. Now this has rounded corners, so no big deal. We'll just say Select, Modify, and we'll do some smoothing. And I'll do a pixel value of 10, and it rounded the corners for me. Shift-Delete to call up the Fill dialog box. Fill that with white, and we'll just place that behind. And you see the logo has been restored. So, easy enough. At this point, I'm happy with those. I'm going to go ahead and press Command G to group them together, and we'll call that logo. The benefit of grouping it is now you can move it as a single item, and everything stays attached. Now, what we're going to do next is create a cast shadow. And this is pretty easy to do. I'm going to turn these layers off for a second, and just choose Select All, and then Copy Merged. Edit, Copy Merged. When I paste, you'll see that places another copy inside the document, and that's fine. I can nudge that so it's aligned if we need to. We could turn everything else back on, and that'll work out well. And what I want to do on this copied document is lock the transparency here, because now we could just do Shift-Delete and fill that with black for the shadow. And you see that the outline is now filled in. We're going to move this behind the logo itself, and nudge it a little bit. See, there's the shadow. Now, what I want to do is make this shadow cast, and you have to decide where's the light. In this case, I want the light to come and throw the shadow a bit forward. Easy enough. Press Command-T for free transform, and I'll go ahead here and tell it that I want it to actually flip vertically. And what we have there now is it's going to come here, and we can connect those. That works pretty well. I'll nudge that down just a bit, actually. Let's zoom out, Command minus, and right-click or Control-click, and we're going to change the perspective. 
So now when we drag here, you'll see that it gets like a cast shadow, like it starts to take on some angles. Now when you do that, you might need to play a little bit. You might pinch those in just a little bit there. But that's working pretty well. We now have a shadow that looks like it's being thrown in front of the object. To make the shadow believable though, it can't be 100% in black. Unlock the transparency and go ahead and toss on a little bit of a Gaussian blur. For a video graphic, a value in the neighborhood of 5 pixels is usually enough. Let's take this back up a bit. We can now change the blending mode to multiply, which is a much more realistic mode for shadows, and lower it to about 70 or 80 percent. The multiply mode does a good job of mixing the dark shadows with the colors underneath, so the shadows and the actual colors of the scene intermingle a bit, making it more believable. And what we just did is created a fairly easy to do, realistic cast shadow here, and made this look like it was in an environment. If you want to finish this out, there's one more trick we can do, which is to make it look like there's an actual light in the scene. I'm going to make one more layer here and put this up on top. And we'll fill that with 50% gray. Shift delete and call up the fill box and choose 50% gray. We'll then take advantage of filter, render, lighting effects. And you could choose the type you want. You have spotlight and omni lights, etc. I'm going to use an omni light here and play with its intensity. Not quite so hot. And then make it a little bit shinier. And a little bit more towards the plastic side. You could play with under or overexposure to lighten it or darken it. And when satisfied, click OK. You've now rendered essentially a light to its own layer, and then you could play with blending modes. For example, screen will work out pretty well. Lower the opacity of that, and what you see if we toggle that off and on is that there's a little bit of a hot spot right towards the center there that actually affects the logo. You could play with the opacity overall in the blending mode as needed, but that little extra touch just makes the logo look like an actual light was hitting it a bit more. For Photoshop for Video, I'm Rich Harrington. I hope you enjoyed this week's podcast. We've got more than 100 episodes on our website that you can watch, so visit photoshopforvideo.com and be sure to check out some of the back episodes. While you're there, be sure to post a comment because we'll be doing a drawing for a free copy of the book, Photoshop for Video, from Focal Press. Thanks for joining us. I'll see you next week.